Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, again, again we're together, again we're here, again, you know, the crew put this set together and, you know, was on cameras and standing with cue cards and in the audience and, you know, people are directing the show and working the graphics and the audio and all the things that take to make this show happen and to make it available, you know, with our love for you in love. And, you know, as we do it, again and again and again and as, as you reach back to us and tell us you know how much you appreciate it you know there's just it you know there's a time when we have to come forth in that love in that collaboration in that recognition to sing the recognition to sing the praise of that love to not let another generation go through their lives or their their youth thinking that the real things are all the separations, all the divisions, that the real God is, is money, that the real God is fame. For those of us who've had a touch of that true love, of that connection, of that oneness, you know, now's the time. Now's always the time. But now in particular is the time. You know, we were walking on the beach earlier today and we saw, you know, a group of kids. You know, they're running and they're playing and they're free and they're childlike and they're not bound by all the definitions and the concepts that we have. And then we started talking and we realized that in 8, 10, 12 years from then, depending on the age of these children, some of these children, maybe not those particular children, but somebody on some beach somewhere in some city somewhere, are going to be strapping bombs to themselves and going into the most congested place of their enemy, of their different. And they're going to try to take their own life and as many lives as possible. And there are going to be others of those children, male and female, who are going to be in bombs, in bombers, 30,000 feet in the air, dropping hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of pound munitions to kill and maim their enemy. And so when is that love going to, to be? To be manifest, to be true, to be in, in this earthly life as the love. And we all know now is the time. So, you know, let's, let's just try to do it. And, you know, as we normally do, we have somebody whose life is dedicated to recognizing that love and sharing it. Alana Zabel is a spiritual teacher. She's a yoga instructor. She's a worldwide workshop leader. Uh, she's the author of an extraordinary children's book, A Chair in the Air, where she did the graphics and the illustrations, the graphics and the words. And, you know, interestingly enough, so much of her focus is on the children. She teaches yoga to kids. Her books are for children and, young, and children of all ages. And she, in a way, is young in years, but, but old and, and concentrated in her dedication and in her wisdom and, how, and her understanding of that love is the answer. And that every way that we can think of to divide ourselves only hurts, hurts ourselves and ultimately hurts the children. So, you know, it's interesting, but a lot of the bridging shows recently have been about children, about children's schools, and Michael was setting up Michael Tamora. The, the Carmens were talking about the, uh, the recognition before birth. So it just seems like now is the time to open our hearts and to share that so children aren't burdened. Let's not have another generation of suicide bombers, of bombers from the sky, of hate, of division, of differences. So as we normally do, join me in a short meditation, and then we'll have, we're also actually tonight having, we got a bunch of requests for some of the lessee of music videos that we haven't shown in a while. So we have two of those. We have Heaven and Earth and Spotlight. So join me in a short meditation or just relax, settle in. Alana's going to be with us. The videos are going to be with us, and it's about the love. So please join me.
Thank you. So let's start tonight's show with uh, the Lessia music video. This is written by myself and Lessia. This song is called Heaven and Earth. The slides you'll see by an old friend of, of bridging, uh, Walter Matheson. It's performed by Lessia. It's Heaven and Earth. Welcome back. We're on the set with Alana. Welcome, Alana. Thank you so much. So, when I mean, when did you realize like that you were going to have to know love and share it? I mean, when in your life did that become really clear to you? Um, I think that's innate. Really? <laughs> I do. And we all know that. That's our hunger. That's the food. But I mean, when did it reach your consciousness uh, that this was something that you're going to have to live out and manifest and seek to, you know, have a livelihood from it and all? When that? I forgot it. When all of a sudden I was surrounded with uh, judging, with being in Los Angeles where people view you how you look, and I fell victim to it. All of a sudden I lost a part of me that I didn't know what it was, and I was searching to find, I searched through bushes to get down to the root, and the root was love. The root was love. Everything is love. If you generate hate, your cells divide, 
and we create disease. If you generate love, you, do you ever see someone in love? They, they doesn't matter where they could walk. Mother Teresa could touch lepers. It doesn't matter. If you have love, you are totally healthy. Your immune system is booming. Love is everything. And also you had a serious accident that mm -hmm. kind of flipped your life around. Exactly, because I wasn't consciously generating love before that point. It was just natural, like it is for most people. Then all of a sudden I was consciously uh, fearful. All of a sudden I was consciously reactive. And the love then was suppressed and was dying, and then I wasn't as healthy, and I had a question, and that was the sort, you know, it was the surface. What's happening to me? What can I do? So then you go to the supplements, you go to the doctors, you're going to the chiropractors, you're doing yoga, and you realize that you become dependent on those things until you get to the source of the liberation, and you don't have to do yoga. You don't, I mean, it's great. <laughs> but yeah, you don't have to do those things. You don't have to take all the supplements. You just sit down and generate love and you're healthy. Or, or connect to the love you are. I mean, you're not really generating it, right? I mean, wouldn't you say that? Well said. Yeah, let, reveal it. Let it reveal itself. Because what it is, is the body constricts it. As we get older, we get tighter, and it's the ego body that all of a sudden constricts and controls, and the love can't flow. It can't move. If you're loose and you're free and you're happy, when you're happy, you're loose. And that's what, you know, they talk about being childlike, and we were talking at the opening, or we were talking during the day, that childlike quality. Right. It's the looseness, the openness to to what you are and what the universe is. And right. Like. And if you go with the same concept of flexibility, children are just so flexible. Yeah. Even physically flexible. Physically flexible. Right. When I teach children, it's not. A, I'm teaching them more strength than when, on the physical aspect of yoga than I am flexibility. They've got the flexibility, head to the back of their knees. And so. You know, as I said at the open, it seems like a lot, a lot of people who you know have different spiritual, uh, even different spiritual paths, seem to be focusing very much on you know the younger generation of children, so that they possibly don't have to go through the you know the twists and turns mm -hmm. that we did. So when did it, it kind of focus in for you that you wanted to do you know work with children a lot? Naturally, I've always worked with children, but when it was conscious, again, it came to a point when I was meditating and I realized, why bother with the old? Oh, <laughs> Some of our audience would be very pleased that they couldn't cut out. <laughs> At what age did they start getting cut out of your world? Okay. A little, little, little concerned. I actually might be on the other side of it. But <laughs> well, for you older folks, uh, you can you can go to sleep now. And actually, I'm going to leave the set myself. So <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. Oh, okay. Right. I mean, because I know my grandmother is young. I mean, she's you mean young at heart, kind of young at heart. All right. I was, just I, but, but I was concerned actually, that there was going to be a, an age verification. But the actual parallel I was making was in the meditation. You know, the thoughts. Why you just let those old thoughts just keep recirculating? So that's what I was saying. Let that exfoliate. Like, and like, what uh, what old thoughts do humans have that you have that you started to see that? We, we, we repeat the old patterns. Like, why did I do this five years ago? Why did I do that? All this past, past, past is constantly regurgitating in our head. And it comes down to a point where you just say, where am I right now? Right now, I'm here. I'm alive. I'm happy. I, I'm so thrilled to be part of this human experience and be here and start generating new fresh seeds. The fresh seeds develop a new fresh garden. If you're always just worrying about the old and you've got to constantly pull weeds and you've got to you're constantly be watering this old soil. And even in the future, I mean, you're not, you know, the future and the past at some point are the illusion of not being in the present. So. Right. I, I mean, use the future as hope. You to watch something grow. You plant a seed because you're excited that it's going to grow into something beautiful. You're not too attached, you know, that eventually it's going to, you know, die, arise and pass away. That's the law of our existence. But definitely to be excited to watch the process, to be in the moment as it's happening. And, and how do you find, do you, have you been finding, because it seems like there's tremendous energies now that, you know, the awakening is happening, mm -hmm. you know, to all ages, older, younger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, I mean, do you find, like, children are more receptive, like we've heard, you know, and we've had guests on to talk about the indigo children or yeah. children like that. Why don't you talk a little about yours? Last year, every single one of my private yoga clients became pregnant. So all of a sudden, I was like doing pregnancy yoga, but now I have about 15 little, between six and nine month old babies that I am now seeing on a regular basis because I'm still working with their parents. And these kids are special kids. 
they're amazing. Just like in terms of like awareness, you can yeah. feel their conscience, their focus and all that. You can communicate eye to eye, soul to soul. They, they get it. And I've always noticed that kids could do that, but these kids for eight more so. They have really special names. They're going to be raised in a much more aware environment with healthier foods and with more love. There isn't going to be as much reaction and as much ignorance as there was in the past. So they're going to be amazing kids for that reason as well. But you also teach in a middle, middle school mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And, and do you see a transformation happening on that level with your kids, what, 12, 13, 14? Yeah, and so they're at a really tricky place, so they're about to fall into the pressures, especially being in Los Angeles, too, the pressures of Los Angeles and how they look. But I just want to encourage them just to stay open, just to be really natural. You know, I'll be doing a pose, and they'll start giggling because I have a big butt. And that's the greatest opportunity. But since J Lo, you're <laughs> you're better off. Isn't that isn't that true Thank of for God the older for that. generation? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for them, like you know, they feel like they have to go work out or take some diet pill, you know, because it's a faux pas or has been in the past. And I tell them, you know, that's who I am. I have a big butt. You know, you have you know, whatever you want. We're, we're doing a second half big buttage if yeah, so I just want, I, what I want to encourage the kids is to accept who they are, you know, not to, to judge themselves, not to beat themselves up in self-hate, and to keep their flexibility, to keep their minds open and keep love. And when you talk about flexibility, you're talking about not only the physical, but the, the emotional, well, childlike quality, the emotional openness to, to new experiences, to grow. Mm -hmm. to, it goes hand in hand. If you know really uptight people, they're a little more uptight. They're a little stiffer. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, and what made you write that, you know, really incredible children's book that you illustrated? Mm. It is one of my privates. She has a seven-year-old son, and he is uh, ADD, very ADD, and so on Ritalin. He's an extreme case, and his name was Nikki, and he would barge into our yoga sessions frantic about just the smallest things he's outrageous and one day I was just like Nikki you're just so picky and it turned into a rhyme and then we started doing private yoga together just me and him and because he's so big in his energy he's so creative he can do everything in the yoga postures because the energy is pumping through he just doesn't know what to do with it yeah, it's all out of control. Yeah. So if you find somebody that can guide somebody like that, he can be such a powerful person. Instead of letting it feed off of him, choose yeah, what to up. create right. with right. it. Use it for something good instead of it just you know, eating And so out. is that process of, of you know, channeling that energy and him being able to deal with it, is that working through yoga and all? It really is. It's outrageous. I, it, I get chills I mean, when does, I watch it grow. children like that at some point be able to get off the Ritalin and, and the drugs that, you know, have, you know, they have maybe some positive effects, but they also have, you know, toxic and very right. powerful drugs. I believe in that, but his parents don't want to take him off the Ritalin to take that chance, so it's, it's not my choice to ask them to do that, but I believe... But they notice a definite change. Change just from the, the activity like that. He just, you know, just for someone to tell him how powerful he is, how creative he is, what he can do with it. Don't waste this opportunity. Use that. You know, Nick, you don't want to go five years from now and then realize that you could have created something five years ago. So I want to just always be there to remind him. Mm -hmm. And and I know, you know, just because we spent the afternoon together, that. Uh, you know, doing things in joy is really important to you. So whatever you're doing, that that's if that's not a component, then something would have to be. So why don't you talk about like you know how to come into that joy and how to manifest that joy? No matter you know, in every life there are the ups and downs. And mm -hmm. It's about following what you feel. If you follow what you feel, you're going to go do something that you love to do. And if you're doing something that you love to do, whether it's flipping hamburgers or it's leading the nation, it doesn't matter what you're doing, it's how you're doing it. So do what you love to do. And if you're doing something in a nonprofit organization with hate or negative feelings in your heart, it's not doing anybody any good. So it's just how you do things, not what you're doing. And so why do you think it is that, you know, I said at the open and that we end up uh, you know, on this plane, seemingly that people have more recognition or s enough recognition of the hate and the distinctions and the differences that make it so that we blow each other up, that we mm -hmm. do terrible things to ourselves and each other. And well, I give thanks to those people because they teach me how to be more loving, and I'm saddened that they chose that role because I don't want to choose that role. But they chose that role to show us, and historically track it, 
Don't do this. This is a mistake. This does not work. There's nowhere to go from here. This is a dead end. Where's their life and where's their network love? So, so the way you would view it is that, in other words, they're a mirror. Mm -hmm. that, every, you know, th that everyone in that way is a mirror to say, oh my God, let's not do that. Right. If we didn't know the nighttime, we wouldn't love the sun time. Yeah. But it's interesting to me that it got to the point that most people think that that almost is, is the most natural way to have all the separations and, you know, the different, you know, we're talking this afternoon about different countries and different right. religions and different sexual preferences and, and the tolerance. There isn't even tolerance, no less you know, understanding and, and the experience beyond that in a way of the oneness of what we really are. And why don't you talk but about again, I thank them. I thank my grandparents. I thank my parents because they endured such ignorant times where everything was just in this man's world. And I grew up looking at that knowing that I wanted something different. And it forged me. And this is just a process of evolution. As these children grow up, they always want to make something just a little bit better, just a little bit more perfect. I, I know that's a hard word to define but they're always just looking to improve and that's evolution happening our minds are evolving by watching so I give thanks there's a sadness because I wish my mother could have the freedom that I've had as a woman and she didn't but she chose that and that was her role and I'm grateful for what I've so learned. So why don't you talk a little about, about choosing our destinies or choosing our path how do you see that? Hmm, that's a really good question it just is I, you know, it was a lot of times I, I look at my life and even before I was conscious, I'm doing the same thing. I just am now so much more aware of it. I was teaching dance to children when I was 16 years old. I was teaching tennis to children. I was doing the same exact thing. Do you think that, that do, we do, do we make that choice pre-birth, pre-hundred births? I mean, <laughs> I just don't think it's a thought. I think it just is. You know, you're out there, your soul, you have the configuration for it, you have the desire for it, boom, you're there, you're doing it. So there isn't as much of a thought process. It just is. And so, and how does this, this soul develop over time? Do, do the lessons get learned lifetime to lifetime? Who creates a nitrogen molecule? Who creates a hydrogen molecule? Oh, we have <laughs> a know? scientist that's next to that for the show with the butt. <laughs> the Dr. Lowe. Dr. Dr. Buttage. And, and we do have actually J Lo for a little experiment. <laughs> she's doing the video with Lesia, right? Yeah, she's, she's working on the video. <laughs> um, you know, so I just feel there, if you trickle everything down in alchemy, you trickle it all down to just the raw elements, it just is. And then if you configure the elements, that's what makes you so special. It makes you who you are. And it just makes me different and unique because we're just configured differently. So if you really broke it down, it's just science. So, uh, and what would make one person this way that it is choose to, to be mm. the mirror, you know, choose to be the Judas rather than the Jesus? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. What is the difference? Mm. I don't know. It's so easy to. Judas hung himself. <laughs> Jesus got crucified. So, so similar. Lo and behold, it worked out well for everyone. <laughs> but we look at the heroes. We look at the people in the white robes. It's so much different than the people, than the Hitlers. But they all were really being driven by providence. And I'm sorry. Sometimes it's so hard to say, but spirit sends I mean, us all so here. Is it <laughs> is is our lives predestined, or is it grace? Is it effort? I mean, I mean, these are you know interesting spiritual questions. That been talked about. I know these are so, heavy ones. You should have told me beforehand. I thought about it. Right. <laughs> like I, I didn't thought. know until I got here. Until <laughs> I put this really on the table, no. it was very difficult. I love it. You know, I fluctuate back and forth. For the majority, I believe everything is predestined. If I, my destiny is to get that rose, I'm going to get the third rose from the middle. Be careful, it is my side of the rose. You get this side. Separation. <laughs> <laughs> but how I get the rose, when, the conditions, the drama and the play of it, that's what I choose. But the action and the destiny of me getting the rose, it's going to happen. So, I mean, when people talk about free will, mm -hmm. okay, so, and this free will starts when? 
does it start as a child? Does it start when we're 15? Mm -hmm. Does it start 15 lifetimes before? Does it start at pre-birth? And then why do people choose to be Hitler rather? And how does, uh, okay. or Judas rather? You know. <clears throat> I mean, you know, these are there. tricky questions. I'm, see, I'm not much sure about free will, and I think that's another well, great free will illusion. Is love. But free will is love. It's choosing not to, you know, to judge Well, people have the concept you. of free will, and that you know, people are, are making choices, but there's so much momentum behind them. It can almost look like they're not making a choice. So it's it's another one of those places on earth where it's like almost a razor's edge between grace and effort between uh, duality and oneness you know and you're in a physical body and you're the infinite okay the infinite God whatever you want to call it is there you're Right, exactly. Always there. Okay, so here's the difference. Let's use the example of the body. Constriction, there's no life, there's no love, there's no God. Expansion, looseness, softness, it's there. It floods, there's the love. It's the same thing out in the universe. Love is always waiting. It's always waiting. It's when we choose to accept it and to be aware of it. There's the free will. It's always there. It's never going to be shut off. And so what choose, how, why would one person choose not to want the love or not to accept the love that they are? Fear. Fear. And why would one person have fear and not another? Why would one have fear and one have not another? Who hasn't had fear? Well, I mean, we're just talking about like making that choice. I mean, you know, it's, you it's know, the same thing with the, the bomber. Because when you've known fear and you realize that that doesn't work, you let go of fear. So it helps you. No, I mean, I don't know the answers to these questions either mm -hmm. on some level. Oh, there's no quiz? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to quiz myself at the second half because it's <laughs> a topic I do have studied books, <laughs> but no. Uh, you know, these are just interesting questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's interesting because, see, I think. In my experience, when someone experiences that love, that infinite, that God, that in a human body it feels like love. But, mm -hmm. you know, in essence, it's energy. Right. But it, it, as a human, we experience it as, as surrender, as love, as oneness. You know, and we're just using words to describe it, so we use a word called love. But, you know, God, it, you know, is just like this conscious energy, just mm -hmm. vibrating. It's always there. Always there. Well, when we choose made of. to allow it, it's only when our ego and our will gets in the way that we constrict, we control, we tense, and we say, "I can do it." I mean, that's actually what the Big Bang was. That's when all of a sudden we separated ourselves from God because it's no, I can do it. The birth of the ego. I want to do it. So, I mean, some people think of it as an experiment. That this, you know, God wanted to see itself, mm. you know, as separate and to see what would happen. That the experiment on this plane, on the Earth plane, would be, is that you take the infinite it. You put it in seemingly separate forms. You put it in male forms, female forms. Uh, you know, there'll be a lot of different religions. So people will pick different things. There'll be things that will, you know, put out in the sand and call countries. And people will believe it and they'll put up borders and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then what's the, the point of coming home? How do people come home to that? You know, I mean, people have talked about that being the particular experiment here. And mm -hmm. people who come in with the consciousness that they're one and then forget. You know, and that's part of what it is here. So, and the story of the prodigal son. You know, he runs off because he wants to live a pagan life, and you know, spends all the money and you know, whoring and all that. And then he comes running home, and his father, open arm, throws a party just to see him. And the contrast of just being loved. You know, just to come back to love after having such a, an experience, thinking you can do it on your own and, and making a mess and having accidents and not generating love. And then you come back and you realize it was always there and I wasn't realizing it or appreciative. Now I'm so much more committed. So, and you're also working, maybe we'll talk about that. Why don't you give a little introduction? You're working on a book about the first, the first <laughs> book for... Why don't you talk a little, tell the title, I love the title. Thank you. It's called Life's First Handbook. And I write in rhyme, mostly. <laughs> no, I know, because she read me a big portion of it today. It was beautiful. Thank you. And so I really do just want to touch base on the things in my life that have been such ahas. So I'm trying to make a collection of my ahas and, and really show people in all different philosophies and religions and... Uh, formats how it's all the same 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually a very interesting piece because, you know, it's all in rhyme. It, it really is like the Iliad. I mean, she's reading it to me this afternoon. Mm -hmm. But there's just a tremendous amount of lightness and a tremendous amount of wisdom in it. So it's, it's really you. far out like that. I'm really excited about it. And so it, basically it's like 95% finished. The right. part you read me, and, and then even uh, I mean the publish is pretty well yeah. done and all that. Make some changes, thanks to you, truly, truly. Ellen has given me the greatest feedback I've ever received in my life, and I'm so so grateful and honored. Thank you. So I'm going to make a nice adjustment. On that note, you can sit with Dr. Bowie. <laughs> even though he's older than thirty. Right, I am older than thirty, and. Uh, Okay, we know where that's been going. All right, so let's do the second video. I know people have wanted to see this. this is the Leslie Spotlight video. Again, Leslie and I wrote it. It's performed by Leslie. It's from the Leslie Bridging Heaven Earth Music CD, and the video is by the Bridging Crew, so it's Spotlight. <laughs> back on the set with Alana. So why don't you talk about this new book, because I mean, it really was fascinating to me how literally, I mean, you rhymed your way through, you know, like so many life situations and you did it lightly, but there was tremendous wisdom there. I mean, how did that come to you? How long did it take you to do that? And, and do, you, you. do you speak in rhyme? <laughs> I've always written my journals in rhyme, and even when I was younger, I always did everything in rhyme. But I truly believe all my books are channeled. I did all of my children's books within three days. And this project I started in October, and I was writing it as a novel, a straight out novel. And it was about a hundred page novel, and I was reading it to a friend of mine. And I was bored listening just to the jargon, because I'm not much of a reader or one to go to lectures. So 
I wasn't, I thought, I'm going to put it in my format, into rhyme. And so I started transcribing this 100-page novel into the rhyme. And I'm just so much happier with it because That's it's simpler. It's really, really joyous and Thank fun. you. And, and you get the essence. You just kind of take out all the middle words and you just get the essence. And that's really why I like doing rhyme. And, and so interestingly, I mean, you know, there aren't that many books like that, you know, since the Iliad and the Odyssey, I think they were in Robert Shakespeare. Or Shakespeare. Right here. <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, do publishers, are they open to, you know, being different that way? Or are they excited about it? Or are they wary of it or scared or you know people don't do it that way anymore unless you're Shakespeare mm -hmm. because I didn't go through the, the process of going to all the different publishers with this one I already had a connection I, I'm not, I don't know but I do know that Dr. Seuss had a problem I, he was trying really hard to get published and he's a brilliant rhymer to me um, but with my children's books, yes, they were definitely a little skeptical of the yoga because that was too new agey at the time. But now they're just so much more open to it. Yeah, yoga is really, mm -hmm. I mean, in a way, taken off. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, whether it's good for yoga or not. I mean, because you know, sometimes people, you know, things get blown and right. then they're gone. I've done that. Of course, you have to. Do it. And you I think the beauty of yoga, it keeps going. You know? It keeps going. There's just so many more layers. The layers are infinite. Yeah, if you keep it up. But I mean, some people, you know. Just in the, you know, in the Western cultures, I mean, you know, like there are 150,000 stations, mm -hmm. and unless you really click into you know the value of one. But then that's frivolous, you know. That's like working out. It's like how much muscle can you possibly build? It's finite. Yoga is about tapping into love, and that's infinite. So, and you teach, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, adults too. I mean, mm -hmm. over 30, 30 to 40. <laughs> I even and have a 72 that. year old private. Yeah, 72. Wow, that's that's younger than. <laughs> no. uh, so, and you're finding there's a tremendous resurgence of people recognizing the essence of what yoga is about and mm -hmm. really seeking that out and using assets not, as you say, as an exercise program. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that it's not that, but in addition, that, that the real root is that connection, that yoga right. Uh, union, right? Yoga means union, mm -hmm. that love, right? Union, so that what I feel my and my thoughts and my feelings are represented by my actions and what I do so I'm not feeling a certain thing and saying something else that's living a lie so truth is this is what I feel and I'm gonna express it in a loving way that's yoga or union and so it's the same manifest in the body the outside ego the body that protects our soul is just soft it trusts it's not so hard and rigid and, and warlike there's no no reason to be at war you know, so when, when those match, then you have the union. You have a soft, supple body that's still protecting your soul and your spirit. And, and, and there's no conflict. So if, you know, somebody is watching the show of all ages and they, and they felt like, you know, it was important that they could sense your joy, they could sense your peace. I mean, what, you know, recommendations would you give them to start out with, you know, five, ten, you know, until the show's over? You know, what, how would you... You know, recommend to people that they pursue that that love, that openness, that surrender. Surrendering, um, as far as in yoga. Just in life. Just in life. Yeah, just going through the surrender, sitting in nature, and surrendering. Just trusting, trusting, observing is something that's natural. But you know, whether this the birth of a child that's natural or an ocean or a mountain or something that they love to do that stirs up even if you're in love with somebody just has, generate love you love your dog you love something and then research that love research and, and find how you can spread that to everything in your life and, and how would you I mean in your life what was the way that you you expanded that love to include you know more and more things that you know that your life started to be filled with beautiful moments beautiful mm -hmm. minutes beautiful five minutes ten minutes hours days weeks and then you have a beautiful year I think it was when I started teaching yoga I started teaching and people became so receptive to it and I would sit up at the front of the room and see this green light just wrapping around me and my heart was just so huge and I would just go and look at each person in the room and organically love each and every person and the love just kept expanding and my life started changing everything it got so big and I hit my threshold on it all of a sudden it became too big all of a sudden 
too many people wanted something or I all of a sudden started pulling the reins back because it was going too fast and then when I fell off again I said what happened and I realized it was my fears it was my judgments my stuff went back reassessed and now I want to be back in that place again that is my my goal every single day so is to be back it's, at that place. it's almost kind of you know lining up with your soul's purpose or lining up with your destiny just you know that your actions are manifesting that inner love mm -hmm. and whatever what, whatever form it could and not expecting anything back not being afraid just keep generating it just keep putting it out there you know we're all sitting here everyone on this planet waiting for love and guess what the love is what we do like who's gonna be the first one to step up and just give the love well, we can all do that we are yeah right. that's exactly it. and that's, and that's, the, that's the awakening we're seeing it's like all of a sudden everyone realizes that they are responsible and they can make a difference sitting wherever you are right now you're making a difference on the planet if you generate love and, and in your experience I mean you do workshops all over the world that that, that is really manifesting and stronger and stronger and people of all ages, races, creeds are recognizing that joy doesn't have a religion, that mm -hmm. joy doesn't have a country, that joy uh, doesn't have a sexual preference, that joy doesn't have an age, that right. joy is unto itself. That is what, in a sense, what people call God. But if that tool works, if they need that prop, even that the prop being the prop being a crucifix the cross being a bible what um the quran the cross being a person whatever they need to generate that love and as long as they're consciously realizing that they can eventually do it being alone that's that's the ideal and then taking it into the community into the world because then we become dependent on it the outside thing um do you think of that movie castaway with tom hanks and the volleyball, you know, Wilson became his thing. It was the only thing that he could generate love towards, and he became dependent on it. And that's what we do with things. And yeah. people and, and religions and countries and all the things, and it soccer rings. teams and, and then when the Kiwanis Club and all the things. We, you know, we try to connect to something bigger than ourselves when we really mm -hmm. want to connect to but the our own true self or God or whatever. The problem with that is that because everything dissolves and the only thing that is permanent is our soul is that when those things are gone then there's the yo-yo devastation when you know Wilson the volleyball gets you know out in the waves Mm -hmm. When they closed the Kiwanis Club, I felt terrible. <laughs> I don't even know what Kiwanis I mean, is, but I'm going to... They switched just, you know, out of this area, and it was a very dangerous time for me. <laughs> sorry, I'm really sorry. I have gotten over it over a number of years. Uh, so, you know, the thing to me that's interesting, and, you know, I said a little at the open, is... And we see it a lot here because, you know, literally people come from all over the world and, and do the show here in common. We spend time with them and that more and more people are coming and in, in earth years are youthful. I mean, you know, we have somebody coming on later this season, Vanessa Stone, who's from Austin, Texas, 27 years old. Beautiful. I mean, unbelievably gifted, unbelievably surrendered, you know, faith. And, and you know, for us, it's just, it's just a beautiful experience to see that happening. And then these people taking it back to, you know, the children. And, and so cause I know and from myself growing up that, you know, I had to like, I knew it as a child and I forgot and, you mm -hmm. know, then the remembrance came back at different points and, you know, got fuller and fuller. But it would be more beautiful if we never went into, in a way, mm -hmm. that separation where it was, you know, where hate is there and differences mm -hmm. are there. Eventually. Yeah, I mean, I, I, but I see that energy really happening that, you know, when, you, when you're with the children and when Vanessa is and Michael and all these people that, you know, something really happens and, and people are focusing their attention on that. So. They're the future. Children are tomorrow. They're the leaders of tomorrow. They're the teachers of tomorrow. You can teach a child. The sooner that you can teach a child, the less that they have to unwind later. Well, yeah, I mean, I would almost say, you know, it, not even teach them, but not allow them to, to be taught things that mm. are divisive, yeah. you know, and are destructive and our uh, result in hate and result in the you know bombings and all the mm -hmm. things that we do and you know the beauty to take in the yoga to take in the teachings to take in the, the psychic remembrances you know just so they don't forget them mm -hmm. I and mean, that's you know Strike we've had so many in. guests on the show who are incredible psychics who went through just torment and years of forgetting 
and then you know came back to it but just because mm -hmm. nobody believed in it they mm -hmm. were taken for exorcisms they were taken for uh, that's the, the law of Kabbalah. The more that you have to reinforce something, like the more resistance that you have, the stronger it gets. So they're the ones bursting it open for these children or for whoever else, you know, to do that. And I, gosh, I tip my hat to, to people that have really struggled to open the doors. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you went to the website, but we had, you know, a good friend of ours, Gina Jiddy. I mean, one of the really great healers of the world and won awards from Russia for all the things he did with the Chernobyl victims and all that. Mm. I mean, he went through a thing that he was given exorcisms, and then he was given uh, two shock treatments a week for 50 weeks for a whole year because he had all these gifts as a child. And, wow. and then he forgot them like for 40 some odd years until another weird set of circumstances. So, I mean, a lot of people, those kind of gifts were not empowered and enforced and, and recognized and loved mm -hmm. and nurtured and to see that you know you're in there doing it is really fantastic women have really endured that a lot you know the number 13 because that's you know women it, there's 13 lunar cycles so they say you're loony because you're following the lunar cycles always you know suppressed because um they were just more in tune to nature the cycles of nature and so a lot of times I don't want to say men because I don't want to differentiate too much between men and women, but society suppresses what is natural. You know, we, the way we want our highways to, to go, it doesn't matter what's natural and there should be, you know, cows grazing there. <laughs> Plow right over. So whatever is natural and powerful, we tend to suppress. And why do you think that is? I mean, don't so natural love kundalini. You know, it, has to, it has to be suppressed in order to get really strong to pop the lid. So it's necessary to do that because of the evolution of consciousness, mm -hmm. in, a, in a way. It's part of it. That's why it's best not to judge. Just everything is perfect. Everything is part of it. Yeah, I told you, we, we got this new expression, it's perfect and can be better. That's <laughs> our new motto. You know, everything's perfect and can be better. It's great. And you know, that's how we, you know, we, you know, we try, always try to do the best we can. And then, you know, just because we do it live and, you know, we do it, uh, you know, everybody here, all the crew is volunteers. Nice. So, you know, we do the best we can, then we go eat. That's <laughs> how, yeah. And then we, you know, then we do another one. Like a know? good Italian family. Yeah, it's really <laughs> Some of the Italian families have, have other businesses that we, however, are not going to try to discuss at this point. We have all these shows on other cable stations. That, uh, so where do you, I mean, I mean, I know you want to live in every moment. You want that joy to, to move you through your life. I mean, do you see like a series of books? Is there like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Miscellaneous Nine or, you know, the, your first book, your second book, your 93rd book? <laughs> I, mean, I just trust. Yeah, I, I'm very so what are you pleased. On now? What are you working on? I'm finishing up this last book. Um, I'm, I'm just pleased to watch my life evolve. I, I, I'm so thrilled. And when you don't get involved, it's a miracle before you every single day. I don't want to try to plan under control it. It's just it's really nice. So, I mean, really, you feel every day almost like you're born again and there's just unlimited opportunities in a way. You wake up and, and you have certain and intentions and, and certain appointments, but that the infinite is there, the infinite is that available. That those appointments are part of it. The people that I meet in the waiting room, wherever I'm supposed to be, it's all part of it. It's, it's unbelievable. So what would be some other, you know, like little tools or tricks or, you know, ideas that you would have mm -hmm. for people to, to come into the joy that you know and, and I, stay with it? I think know? one of the best ways to not judge someone is when you realize that that person truly is you. You, you represent an aspect of me and I represent an aspect of you and if I'm rubbing you wrong or creating friction it's because you don't want to face that part of yourself so that's you're focusing on instantly what it is that you don't want to face or something that you love or something it's going to bring up something and so when you realize that that's your growth when you see somebody else and if they're irritating you when you can help them or love them or be compassionate towards them you've healed that aspect of yourself whether you're conscious of it or not but when you generate judgment or anger you're making it worse it's creating more and more cells to divide and so you're talking about like just shining light just being aware when you're when you're doing that, when you're creating mm -hmm. judgment, I find it gives some people leverage. 
to to generate love because mostly self-oriented self-motivated how is it going to help me so coming from that point that it really motivates people to not generate anger because it's going to affect you so don't go there don't do it generate love and then you eventually get to the point where you realize that you really are me and so it's not about just self-motivated me wanting love and health for myself it's about this whole entire world being the best it can be so in other words we start out selfish <laughs> right, and we can we move to hopefully at some point to it's some like level of self selflessness we start on the surface we start on the ego we start here on the physical body what I see the visual and then eventually we get down to the energy we realize it's not about me but it does start that way I, I do believe it does and so and then the inner and the outer almost become one mm -hmm. because we stop separating we stop separating me and you and the different everything that we separate here it, it all becomes or the differences become so minute in light of the, the grandeur of the love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you start to see it in different skin colors and different hair and dif the differences as beauty. It's just start it's like a museum. You're walking around and this, everyone's a museum. What an interesting painting. And so when you go through your day, I mean, you're open to like the mystery of it, the, the glory of it. But there's such a formula to it as well. It's, even though it's mysterious, you know it's coming. He, and it's interesting to watch how it's going to happen. And so when you say like, so how would you describe what's coming for you? Love. I, I feel and I see um, the growth of love and the work that I want to do and how I can use the gifts that I've been given to spread that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you know, for us, I mean, you know, we see so often that, uh, you know, the more someone lines up with, you know, that that more and more things they do are done joyfully and lovingly, then their lives are more joyful and loving, surprisingly <laughs> enough. You know, and, you know, and that's, you know, we talk about, like I was just talking to somebody earlier about, you know, you know about possibly next season and what we want to do a show every week and stuff like that and and the first season we did a show every week and by the sixth or seventh show you know doing an hour live show every week we hated it, you know, and we weren't joyful and loving doing mm -hmm. it so it's like why do a show about joy and love and oneness if you like Let's and, go do that show. <laughs> right. I mean, let's, you know, let's get out there and, you know, and it becomes a grind. So to, mm -hmm. to find that balance that, you know, where it is joyful and loving so you know it just seems the way it's set up now because so many people spend so much time and energy and, and you know their time and attention doing things and jobs and money and things that they don't really like to do that that creates the can, disharmony can I backtrack along what you said you can start at the beginning from I guess. when your show is doing well something instigated you to say let's do it more often for whatever reason, it was... No, this actually was the first season, so we didn't uh, know any better. Okay, that okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, gotcha. no if somebody did say it now, and I said, no, we, I think we've learned that lesson. Right. So when you did try to now, do that, it, it is different it now. It was miserable. Right. But it is different now, because maybe there are more people involved, there's more energy, we've done it before. So, I mean, even though this was, you know, eight or nine years ago where we started, mm -hmm. you know, the first season was 13 shows over 13 weeks, and it was... Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it would be different now, but I still, you know, when she said it, I said, I don't think so. And that was my reaction. And it might be a sign. You know, a lot of times, you know, the signs come as those little lessons that eventually you're going to have that. You know, so you fail then, you, you just let it go, oh, okay, up and down. Right. And then eventually, you, you know, years later, yeah. it all of a sudden is happening. You're like, oh, I get it. I had to learn that lesson back then. Well, it also could be that under different circumstances, I mean, if, if we had our own studio and, and everything was set up and we just walk in and all the equipment set up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We walk in once a week or, you know, we do it rather than, you know, and so who knows? I mean, that's like mm. the mystery and the glory as we proceed. If we have that faith, then it's beautiful. But that happens in our lives. You fall in love with somebody, and you, then it ends, and you think, oh my gosh, I'm never going to have love. But you realize you learned so much from that, and then it comes later. It comes in a different form. Okay, 30 seconds. Last mm. thing that you can tell from multitudes. You are absolutely beautiful beings. <laughs> 
and tap into that love. My favorite quote is Mother Teresa, love is a fruit that is always ripe, it is always in season, and you can always pick freely. Wow, that's great. Okay, so that's it, you know, pick the love. Yeah. So if you want any information about uh, Alana, the Lessia CD, you know, anything that we talked about tonight, how to reach Alana, the books, anything, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. You know, we started the show with it being about the love, we ended the show with it being about the love. You know, let's experience it, let's share it, and let's collaborate, let's have fun, let's do it. Good night, God bless you, we love you, thanks for coming. Good night.